Don't wait, come as a shim on my way. I have a few bags equipment I take with me on the Eichberg to test antennas for you guys. See you up there. Check out this nice bag of antennas here. Place it on the Spectrum, which is the receiver. I have all the technical specifications of my testing in the description, of course. But I have this Spectrum around 5.8 with a small bandwidth, so I can scan there quite exactly. And over there in the distance, we have the transmitting device, which is a Clearview TX calibrated to be around one milliwatt as transmitting power. Roughly 10 meters distance will be the same for all antennas. And here I have the laptop with the recording software. Recording data from the Spectron. Firstly, I have around 64, 65 decibel with the antenna I'm using currently. And I will record 10 seconds of raw data with each antenna twice, once oriented normally and once with the antenna null pointing to the transmitter because the antenna null, you see, I'm getting around 5 decibel less, So, but we still see it and that's, that's cool. So my setup with the 10 meters is, is quite good. Of course it's important to go to airplane mode. So the laptop itself doesn't transmit uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So laptop should shut up. Also my phone is in airplane mode. Random weird finding while testing. This thing has 70 decibel in the antenna null orientation. And in the supposedly better orientation, much worse. So that's the a little Emacs dipole, which is not really good. Okay, a bit unfortunate. The battery of the Spectrum didn't last that long. So this was the culprit. 1300 milliamps and it's not good anymore. And I just made me an adapter cable. And this is a 5000. It's not a good one, although it's approved. Now I can power this thing properly with 5000 milliamps. That lets me continue the search for the perfect antenna for you. Recording the data into a comma separated values file and import it to Excel later. Okay, a little finding about the Orca patch. Orca sent me this for review and wanted my feedback. Oriented in the good, where it's pointed directly to the transmitter. It performs 57, 58, around where the other smaller and maybe cheaper patches are. But then I found that it, uh, this is my bad position, where it's tilted 90 degree upwards. And even here it doesn't perform too bad. I mean, I've seen the others go down lower in numbers. Even if it's a directional patch, it's never really bad. It's also there. The Omni doesn't look like a normal Omni, right? So that's just a little finding. Continue with my testing. So this for comparison is the real ACC triple feed patch and now it's in the bad position. And in the bad position it always gets no reception. Uh, sometimes, but not really. While it's in the good position, gets quite decent numbers. 56, 57 is quite good. So it has more directionality. Okay, I'm also kind of proud or happy with the solution here with the 5000 milliamp. This thing wasn't really full, but it ran now for like two hours and I still have 67%. I think I was at 
So this bigger tank here for that measurement device really paid off today. So now I'm gonna pack all my stuff together. Yeah, that's of course the thumbnail and I even got nice lightning. Um, this is a bunch of antennas and I will have a lot of fun collecting the data now in Excel and make them available for you guys. Hope this helps you. I was curious to see how those antennas compare. And I love gathering that kind of information. So here we are on my desktop in Excel. And you see this is a lot of data, boring data. And here I condensed them and took an average of such a line. And I measured it in the good orientation, here vertical, and antenna null, the bad orientation. And I did this for a group of omnidirectional antennas and for directional antennas. This led to decibel averages in the good and the bad orientation. Points for good and bad orientation, points total, which then led to the ranking. It's debatable if you want to give points to the bad orientation as well and how to weigh them. You might reconsider this for yourself and only judge the good orientation. But anyhow, this is my suggestion for a ranking of all the antennas I had. My old uh, FPV antenna test spreadsheet. Uh, I did three major antenna tests in 2018, 2019 and now. I tried to collect as much data there for you, like the type is omni or directional, the gain and the beam width if it's a directional antenna. And here are my measured values. But if we filter now to 2020 here, here I supplied you images so you recognize them easier and also links to the products where I found them. This is the ranking. It surprised me because uh, I used the lollipop stubbies a lot and apparently the stop, the stubbies, yeah, it's a trade-off. Damn convenient because they are so small and can stay on the DJI goggles, but apparently they are not really good. It's better to have the Foxy lollipop 3 in the standard version with the longer cable. They are rank 11 in my test. But once again, here it is debatable if you prefer the score in the good orientation, like the three turn helix is for sure way better than a pagoda with minus 70 decibel. But in the bad orientation, it scored less than this. And the combination of both gives this place five and this place six. Anyhow, this is, yeah, this is just a nice overview for you with uh, links to the antennas. So keep that in mind. Of course, you will find a lot of links in the description here. Like this antenna test Excel sheet, the new more detailed, so you can play around with the data yourself if you prefer to. But, and playing around with data in Excel can be fun if you're really Excel nerd, but it's not the easiest thing to do. But a few weeks ago, something really nice happened when I did my DJI SRD antenna test with the car on my property. A uh, viewer contacted me who is apparently really good with analyzing data. He goes by the nickname D-Rove. So big shout outs and thanks to D-Rove for helping me with analyzing data. And I want to show you this link to the measurement results. And this is the Tableau, Tableau site. It's apparently it's a um, more advanced thing than Excel for statistic analytics. Here you see my measurements of all the antennas in a simple chart. And while this is cool because it shows you where the video signal uh, starts, I measured from 5790 megahertz to 5810. That's 20 megahertz span around immersion channel 4. 5.8 and it was the clear view TX. Basically you have a hard time finding antennas in this mess here. You find the best one, the circular wires, 8 turn, that's no 
surprised that the highest turn helical antenna will score the most. And this is conveniently the sixth turn and this is the three turn. So that's no surprise to me. And down here we have the Emacs dipole, dipole and the DJI stock antennas, which are really, really bad. And there we have a lot of things in between. But I struggled a lot how to display the values the best for you. And I came up with a box plot, a chart form called box plot. Uh, it's in, in the statistics, they use them a lot. And here you just have all the measurements and their distribution and their average and uh, weighted average here in the middle. So just take note of these gray bars in the middle. That's their, that's their performance. And if we want to take a closer look at this distribution, say this uh, very close around 5.8, we have these straight lines. So if we measure just from here, from 5.799 to 5.836, we get a really close number and not so much up and down values, if you know what I mean. We can adjust the slider here, 57.99. Fifty-eight oh straight. Now these boxes here are a bit smaller because yeah we have not so much variation. So you can adjust this slider here to take a closer look at the closer frequency range, which is really cool. And then here he made me some nice interactive elements. For example, we can say we only want to take a look at the good orientation results. So only the goods, good stuff is on the page now. And it's uh, split into directional antennas and omni antennas, which I also like. And you see that there are like, sorry, the ORT dual shield is not really good in this test, but it's convenient. The dual shield in my test performed worse than a Pagoda antenna. This image might change though if we have really long distances. He also implemented a category called design where you can just take a look at all the, let's say all the helicals. Helicals are those spiral antennas and I only tested three of them here. Or let's say the clover leaves, skew planar wheel clover leaves. Uh, you see where this is leading. You can change or select designs. Or you could also check out... Let's say I want to compare those Foxia lollipops because there are a lot of variations like lollipop 1, 2, 3, stubby, micro. You can with control key, you can select them here. Yeah. And then you can just keep them. And now we see, yeah, of course, the Foxy Long Black Pagoda is the best performing. But this is interesting. <laughs> Foxy Lollipop 1 performed the best here, where the others are quite similar. But if I now take uh, both orientations, good and bad orientation, we see one important thing. Namely, the stubby antennas, whilst being so damn convenient, they perform considerably less in the bad orientation than their normal counterparts do. So you see in the bad orientation section here, Pagoda is not so good if you fly overhead. I know this. And the stubbies are really, really bad if you fly in their antenna null. So that was surprising to me because I loved to use the stubbies, but now that I know this, I will probably not use the Lollipop 3 stubbies that I just bought, <laughs> but rather take the Lolly 3 with the normal length cable because it performs just better. 
So you see the possibilities are endless here. If you just hit refresh F5, you come back to the standard view of Tableau. And he also implemented one nice thing called peak gain, the decibel reading and subtract the noise floor from it. So like noise floor was minus 91 decibel and this antenna was 21 decibel higher. So that gets a peak gain score of 21. So this just gives you an idea how much improvement on the signal you see with different antennas. And of course here are the, the helicals, the 8, the 6 and the 3 turn helical. And then we continue with the really ages old immersion RC patch, the little white one. Menace RC, also not too bad. Triple feed patch, extreme cross here. Yeah, and also one thing that I should note, I only tested it in the good and the bad orientation, but I did not consider the beam width of the directional antennas. So, because I say this now because the extreme cross here is an example of extreme wide beam width, which is a good thing for a directional antenna. So it looks here like it doesn't perform that well compared to way cheaper antennas, but you have a wider area to fly with such antennas. Keep, please keep that in mind. Echo patch, I know it's not a good antenna. Aeon way patch, of course. And the dual shields here, yeah, they look terrible here, but once again, they have a wide beam width and they are damn convenient because they are so small. Once again, in the omnidirectional antennas, the pagodas are ranging quite far here. Now we can scroll over. Lollipop 1. So the Lollipop 1 was their best antenna. Yeah, so you get the idea. You can play around with the data yourself. If you have questions, of course, leave them in the comments. I really hope you took something out of this. If not directly from the data, then just from the ranking and maybe it helps you get the buying decision or you can verify. I ho hopefully you have some of the antennas that I tested and you see how they rank. And if it is worth your money to upgrade to other antennas, which you don't always have to buy the most ex expensive antennas because some of the really good performing antennas here are really, really cheap. Like I'm sure the I'm immersion RC patch is convenient because it's quite small, but it's also quite good. So yeah, hope this helps you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now. Please subscribe and also use the bell icon to get notifications when I upload new videos.